In this section, I'm going to talk about the reverse ranking cycle. And this is predominantly used um, in fridges and freezers um, as a, a part of the heat pump, basically. OK, so here's a schematic of um, kind of how it works. So we're going to start, off, say we're up here, some trace of fluid through as we go. So basically the um, fluid starts off quite cold. It's just been expanded through this um, orifice. And as it expands through here, um, it's, the, it's expanded temperature drops. So it's quite cold, low temperature, low pressure here. And as it passes through the fridge and freezer compartments, um, basically absorbs heat from those spaces. It's, you know, very cold here. It absorbs heat. And once it's passed through all these coils, through the um, absorbing heat from the spaces, it's obviously warmed up, so it's a slightly higher um, temperature. The fluid is then um, compressed uh, using a little um, compressor. And as it's impressed, compressed, um, its temperature increases even more. So it's a high pressure, uh, high temperature here. And what happens then is that the um, fluid um, is then passed through a series of coils on the back of the fridge. And if you've ever taken your fridge out to have a look behind, you would have seen those um, coils. And because it's a, a, um, a much higher temperature than its surroundings, i.e. your, your kitchen, um, it radiates heat to the surroundings. So as it passes through these coils, it um, cools and it gets to the um, this point here where it's still at quite a high um, temperature and pressure. And then it's expanded again. And because it's lost that um, heat up through here, as it's expanded, it gets to a much lower temperature in the space. And then the cycle repeats. And basically what it's just doing is it's moving the heat um, from the fridge um, to outside your fridge and dumping it into the surroundings of your kitchen. So this is what that kind of looks like. Um, uh, schematically and then again um, I talked about this in my first lecture um, on the second law of um, thermodynamics so for more information please go back and uh, look at that one so just to um, reiterate so as it goes through the um, the evaporator is the cold space in the fridge and that's absorbing heat from the low temperature surroundings um, so then goes through the compressor where work is put in um, to, to compress it then it goes through the condenser, which are the coils on the back of the fridge, and that releases heat to the um, high temperature surroundings. It goes through the um, uh, expansion valve um, to reduce the temperature and pressure of the fluid, and it goes round and round. And if you remember, um, this is um, um, a heat pump. So what we're saying is we, you know, common sense tells us that heat doesn't flow from a low temperature surroundings to a high temperature surroundings or higher temperature surroundings. Um, but it can do if we put some work in, if we, if we use work to basically pump that heat from the low temperature that, to the high temperature, then that's okay, that satisfies the second law of uh, thermodynamics. And um, typically the um, in our processes, we assume that the um, compression is 100% is um, is isentropic efficiency, this is an isentropic compression isobaric key rejection and isobaric uh, heat absorption. And note, and we'll see this on the next slide, that the throttling um, in the expansion valve can't be treated as isentropic um, just because of the, the, the mechanism of expanding that gas. It can't be treated as um, uh, isentropic. So here's the um, TS diagram um, for that um, cycle. So you can see that um, as the heat supplied and um, the work's done, so it looks um, pretty much like the ranking cycle, apart from we don't go into the liquid phase, um, you know, as we as we did before. And we're going around the cycle anti-clockwise rather than clockwise, as we did for our power generation. Um, so the, um, as I say, the um, heat is um, uh, absorbed um, to the fluid and that is, so basically you're, you're, you're trying to boil it here effectively. Then um, when you compress it, you're effectively superheating it um, with the um, with the compressor there. Then is that um, um, from state two as it goes back through the coils, we're rejecting heat um, from the um, uh, system because um, it's much hotter than things, so it's cooling. 
So it's coming out of its superheat conditions and starting to almost liquefy. And then when we get to state three, we then drop the pressure um, and, so, and um, also the temperature of the fluid. I'm going to say that's what the dotted line there is what it would be if it was isentropic. Um, but just to mind you, it's not isentropic. It's, um, we can't say that process is. So we normally end up, um, we have to have an increase in entropy. So we normally end up a bit further along um, this line um, than we would do otherwise. So in terms of analysing these cycles, well, it, again, it, um, the, because of what you're trying to do, you're, you're pumping the heat. You can either treat this um, process as a refrigerator or as a heat pump. Um, so you're actually trying to, to either trying to cool the, um, the, the surroundings or you're trying to heat um, an environment. And depending on what you're trying to do, there's two ways of analysing the cycle. And um, the way that this is analysed is it's... Um, if you remember for a Carnot cycle, there's um, we um, got these derivations um, from the from the Carnot cycle, whether it's a refrigerant um, refrigerator subscript R, or whether it's a heat pump um, subscript uh, HP. And the reason that these two are different is because um, you're trying to do different things. So these are basically um, analogous to efficiencies, even though we call them coefficient of performance, and um, so what these are is it's um, what you want and what we want for a refrigerator is um, to recall the space divided by um, the work that's required to do that. Um, you can see that here. So the coefficient performance for the refrigerator is QL. That's what that's your desired output, if you like, over your required input, which is the, the network that you have to put in. Whereas for a heat pump, your desired output is QH um, and your required pin. It, input is um, W net in. Um, so um, that's how, how you derive the um, coefficient of performances for these. And they're called coefficient of performances because they can be greater than one. So it's not to confuse you by calling them efficiencies and thinking that you can have a, a greater than 100% efficiency for these systems. Um, so we can see that using the non, uh, sorry, using the um, steady flow energy equation, um, that the um, for a refrigerator QL is defined as the change in enthalpy um, between four and one, and then heat and sorry the network done is between um, two and one. So we can work out the coefficient of performance for the system as a function of these um, enthalpies. Whereas the coefficient of performance for um, a heat pump, because your desired output is the um, uh, the heat to the to your environment, then um, it's a change in enthalpy between two and three, but that's over the same change in enthalpy, which is the the work done between um, two and one. So you can see that these are slightly different, and it's dependent on um, which application you're you're applying these for. So uh, the right um, for all these systems, I mean. Uh, for the power generation um, cycles, we're obviously using water as our working fluid, um, but that won't work for um, the reversed ranking cycle where we're trying to cool. We need to use another working fluid, and we use um, basically refrigerants, and a number of refrigerants have been developed over the years. Um, but essentially, they need um, certain criteria. Uh, they need certain criteria characteristics. So they need saturation pressures, um, you know, at one bar of around minus 20, because obviously they've got to um, exist as vapours at those um, temperatures to um, to absorb the heat. Um, and to also, so you've got a sensible temperature difference in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator space. Um, some practical things, obviously you want them to be non-toxic, non-corrosive, non-flammable, and also cheap. You know, you want to be able to produce um, your devices cheaply so you can sell them. And uh, now, so historically, um, you've probably heard of this, CFCs, uh, chlorofluorocarbons, were used to satisfy the above criteria. But um, since the 1970s, um, they've been banned due to, um, they found there th these CFCs were caused in the ozone layer. Um, they reacted with the ozone layer and break it down. Um, so they've since been banned, or a certain range of them have been banned, um, to, to stop that from happening because of it 
the um, undesirable facts effects that they were having um, on our environment.